My name is Jocelyn Umutoni Wase. I'm a Rwandese. I grew up in Kigali in um, the area called Nyakavanda. It's not far from uh, Nyamirambo, so it's really a sector close to Nyamirambo. I grew up with my siblings. I have five, so we are six in total. Uh, five girls and one boy. For university, I went to KIST, and then also I did a bit of film. At the same time, I was studying in the evening, but during the day, I was doing film. So my background is in film. I did learn directing and photography and uh, editing for almost five years, actually. Yeah, I worked in different organizations, I traveled. I was actually going to be a filmmaker, for sure. That's what I wanted to do as a career. And for university, I was learning ICT. This creativity I have now, it's something which started very young. I used to collect a lot of uh, pieces of fabric, cutting a uh, different type of material at home and just like sew by hand. I also know how to uh, do embroidery. I've learned that with my mom. Uh, I've learned how to do uh, crochet, things like that. So I was always creative. My uncle was a teller, and my uncle is a twin of my dad, so my dad has a twin. And I used to go there, they were in Nyanza. My family grew up there, my dad grew up there, so in Nyanza I used to go there for holiday to see my grandma, and my grandpa, and my uncle. And I would spend mostly, most of my time in his atelier. He had a small atelier with maybe five people, and he was also selling fabric. Mainly he was like a suit maker. It specialized in suit and trousers. That's all they did. They didn't do uh, shirt or anything else. It was just suit for weddings. And I would spend my time there just, just admiring. Uh, making a suit, it's, it's really powerful when you see how it's constructed. It's almost like a, a piece of art. You see they put thread inside. They put different type of material to make it really stand and, and look the way it looks because it's one of the most complicated pieces to make. I would see my uncle wearing those like protection, protection thing on the arm, the hands and stitching at home. He would take, you know, left, if he didn't finish his work, he would take the remaining at home and then I would be there just looking at him. I asked several times to learn how to sew, but you know, with the busy life and everything, we'd be like, yeah, but this is not for you. It's very complicated. Just, just come if you like to be here, but it's too complicated to learn. I was like regularly going there because of that. I really was so fascinated about uh, clothing and fashion in general. And then when I discovered that my uncle has a sewing machine and has people who cut and sew, I was always there just doing things. I have, it was almost like part of my daily life during the holiday. I really don't know exactly, I cannot pin it. But I know uh, when I decided, it's after uh, finishing my film uh, study. It was in 2010. And I was like really fascinated to see also independent designer. And every time I go into a shop, I will see a woman having a showroom in the front and then a small, little small atelier of three sewing machine where she sew everything and sell it in the front. And I, I keep asking, how do you do this? It's like I will sew during the afternoon and then during the mornings, I will be selling the pieces I've sewn. And then I will get different type of order and things like that. I was really blown away. I came back here uh, and I was like, how do I start? I want to do the same thing. And, but then it took me another year because I was afraid. I really, I was afraid to start. I didn't see anything similar that time. I was actually one of those first ones to do it that way, to really learn by myself and do research and, and ask myself, how do I start? It took me a year and I was asking some of my friends, can we study together? Maybe you could do the management and I could do the sketching. I was always talented. I was, have been always sketching my whole life. Yeah, but um, Doing it as a profession, it started when I traveled. I started traveling. I wanted to become uh, an artist. I didn't know exactly, because I was so good. In, I was really talented. People would tell me, you're a good sketcher. You sketch so well. Maybe if you go and study how to do paintings and things like that, you can become a painter. You can maybe become another type of artist. I don't know. 
but then there was really no proper school here and the funny things I was lucky because this where I started my high school they had because um, I did a pass and then also I did Kichukiro Eto Kichukiro there they had art plastic art plastic is a uh, is I think it's it's a section where you can learn uh, painting every single free time I had I would be in their class but I was in biochemistry because <laughs> my parents believe that I would be a doctor, maybe a nurse or something like that. And that time it was really like the thing. And I was, I was clever. I had, I had, you know, the good notes. I was studying biochemistry. So I didn't really want to disappoint them. So I started, I finished the whole thing. But then the moment I finished high school, I was sure I'm not going to be a nurse. I really hate hospitals. I can't be in that environment. So I started researching what can I do. That's when I ended up studying uh, film. Yeah, there was trainings happening here. I joined, then one thing after another. Yeah. For the capital, I've been serving for quite a long time. So all the five years I, I spent in film, I was really saving. I didn't know exactly that money I'm saving is for what. But then the moment I have this really like, the aha moment when I wanted to do it, I knew I would have to start it small. Because I started with two teller in 2012. Two teller, my sister, my husband, and, and that's it. That was the team. I think it was a team of five, max. Half of it was not paid, of course, because we weren't paying ourselves. Uh, we were just trying an error. The first six months, I did sketch and cutting fabric and showing the teller what to do. Like, typical thing. We didn't even actually launch Randa Clothing. When we opened it in 2012, we just went to RDB, registered it, and that was it. We came back, I'm like, we're gonna try to do something. We're gonna try to do Made in Rwanda pieces, very beautiful pieces. If we need to repeat it as, as many times as we can, we have to. And then when I see a collection coming together, that's the time when I can put it out there. I'm really good in seeing the person and knowing this person should be wearing that, I can give you ideas. I'm good also in, in really like, I can guess. I can see you and bring you a cloth, it will fit you perfectly. So I'm, um, I love customization, I love individual style. Uh, that's what I start, like Randa clothing is more of really targeting people who wants to get to know their individual style. And get to grow with the brand and they get to learn the more they change you know from a young woman to a mom you know the more your body change the more you, your, your, your taste change with time so that's what I wanted to do I wanted to really specialize myself in learning what people like people become customers who become royal customer to the brand and grow with the brand uh, the challenge and the frustration has has been quite a lot. Uh, starting as a very, at a very young age, 23, uh, meeting so many challenges as a woman. Because at that time, uh, starting small it's, it was not my choice, actually. I could have asked for a loan or, you know, make it big, I don't know. But the thing is, uh, the, the market was not ready in terms of understanding how a brand works, the whole concept. And is this really will generate money? I remember I went to BDF that time and they were giving money to different uh, project. And they said, no, come, come back when like, maybe in two years or three, when we see the whole thing, how it comes together. So it was really tough to find anybody to say, I believe in this, it's gonna grow in 10 years, I'm going to invest. So you had just to be creative and creative minds it's not only in terms of creativity creating clothes or some, some also in terms of how you're gonna spend this money who you're gonna hire what you're gonna do so that you can grow the brand it was that's a challenge there was another challenge of really finding people who are capable of creating all the vision I have in terms of clothes in terms of the whole concept of the brand it was the, that was a challenge as well another challenge was that made in Rwanda was not a thing that time, really, I think few people had like one, two pieces. It was not even a trend because uh, people were frustrated 
of what used to be made in Rwanda. What used to be made in Rwanda used to be you go to a tailor with a fabric and you wait and you wait, you come back, you call, you, you go there, you get frustrated, you will never get the clothes. That was made in Rwanda. So having a brand properly uh, managed and work, uh, everything is all put together, it wasn't a thing. So when I started, people asked me, ah, why would I give you my advance? How do I know you're gonna do it? I'm like, this is a brand. You, you, everything which we are doing here, it's not like we're gonna close tomorrow and you will never find us here. We are building a brand, a made in Rwanda brand. So really teaching people to forget the old concept, to understand and to support us was really a big, big challenge. One of the biggest actually. With the family and everyone doing everything uh, in 2012 until now, now 10 years later, I have a team of 45 people and uh, my family is still part of it. And these two showrooms and I have an, another showrooms in Kinegi, so the, the brand has grown. I think in 10 years, I would like to have, of course, an online shop. I would like to have, to have a presence on the international market. It could be in Africa, it could be in Europe or US. That's for sure in 10 years. And also to continue to grow the team. I've already started in the last 10 years. I grew from ready to wear to the home decor. And then now I'm trying to see if there is more to, to introduce for the brand. I really want Randa Clothing to, be, to become a lifestyle brand. I think my core advice to the young generation and the, a, a, a girl of 23, 20 who, who wants to be a designer, wants to start a brand, is to really trust in themselves. Everything I started in this brand it was a vision I had 10 years ago. It was everything written, even the interior parts, everything was written in my vision. Of course, it was a big vision. As a young person with no, not so much uh, uh, income or resources to, to start, but the vision, it's important because nobody can take that from you. And you can then go to your own uh, pace, you know? Um, and then also to really try to listen uh, and see what is happening at the market. Be a little bit of more advanced in terms of visual uh, and see what is needed. Because I might be doing uh, the home decor now and doing the, the clothing now. You might come with typical, another type of random accessories for women, maybe it's needed. Or it, and so really see what the industry is needing now that's where you can start and then you can expand to so several different type of uh, lines also uh, to try to do uh, research when you're starting to, to also take part of different training happening around because sometimes when you start in in this industry with really less knowledge the less the, that's you know you don't have you might grow but you don't have so much chance to grow